And we're going to push past that. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so let's read if you have it. You can share with your partner that's next to you or you can look at the monitors. The Bible says, so when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, feed my lambs. He wants Simon to do something. He said unto him again, second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou thee, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto the him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas. By this time you would think that Peter was upset. Lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6 verse 24. And the Bible says, no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon or money. And there's other things that come along with money in this world. Amen? Amen? Let us pray and ask God to help us. I'm going to talk to you this morning from this subject. Lovest thou these? Listen to the question. Lovest thou these? And in our term today, you love this more? You love this more? That's the question. Do you love this more? Let us pray and ask God to help us. Father God, we thank you for your blood. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Lord God, for the reading of your word. Father, your word says, God, that we are to be, Lord God, not only, Lord, hearers of the word, but doers of the word. We have just read it, and we ask that you're right now. Open up our hearts. Let our hearts be open to receive your word today. Father, with power and demonstration, wake us up, shake us, Lord God. Let us be alive and well, God, to hear in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, shake this place. We know that you're here, but it is up to them, Lord God, to get what it is. So if they don't want to receive, they will not receive anything. But I come with great expectation for God for you to show up and show out and show who you are, Lord God. For every person that has a mind to want to receive something today, I pray that you will give it, oh God. What is the reason that we come to church if we don't have an expectation of what God is going to do? He has so much to give, but will you receive the gift that he wants to give you? Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. We lift up our voices. We clap our hands unto you. We bind every spirit of distraction to this morning. In the name of Jesus, every doubt in Jesus' name, God, lift up the faith in the saints right now to preach, Lord God, to hear and to glorify what we're about to receive. In the name of Jesus, clap your hands unto God. Come on, shout on the unto Jesus. Somebody shout out. Hallelujah. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Lovest thou these? Lovest thou these? This word that we use today, love, means so many different things. We understand that the scripture or the Bible lets us know uh, certain things regarding agape love and philos love and all of these things. Uh, things about love that you can say biblical or that's taught. But I'm talking about we throw this word around love everywhere. We throw this word around love. And that love is really not what it is. We say certain things out of our mouth. We say a lot of different things. But really, we don't really understand what we're really saying. Because love just goes out any type of way. And so I want to show you how love actually can appear. I have a video, I'm not sure that video already, but I wanna show you uh, something that deals with deception and delusion. In the world that we live in today, this commercialized or advertisement that we see today, things that you see, or things that might appear to you is really not what it is. 
is really not what it is. And this word love is really not what people try to say that it is as well. It comes out of our mouths, but in real life, do you really love God like you say that you do? Or is it a facade? Is it a delusion? Is it something that you're just trying to put across because it's what's on, on the outside? But what's taking place on the inside? What's really behind the scene? What's really going on? So I want to show this. You might say, well, what does this have to do? But I want you to see how we see things today. Friendships that we say, that's my friend. That's my homie. Relationship that we're part of, that's who I love. The things that you say that you do, is it really what it is? And so this is how advertisement works. Advertisement works as a delusion to make you think what is there. But it's really not what it is. So let me show you how many times commercials... And different things that we see is not really what it is. So we can drive this message home this morning. Pay attention to the monitors and then we'll talk about it after this. Is You probably looked at things and said, oh my God, what in the world? But while you're looking at it, you're thinking that is what it is. And that's the same way when it comes to this thing saying love. You might say, but what's really behind it? What's the real deal? What's really going on? That's the whole message right there. We can go home. But I just want to add some scriptures to what we're going to talk about today. Lovest thou these more? Than who? Than Jesus. And so many times we use this word love. I don't know about you, but I've sat there and said, oh, I love ice cream. I love ice cream. Especially cookies and cream. I love it. But look at the word that I'm using. I love it. Really? <laughs> Another one would be, I love this TV show. I love this TV show. Really? You love it? You love this TV show? 
I love this car. Oh, that's my car. I love this car. Really? You love this car. This is what you like. But then here it is. I love this person. But it's unlawful. I love her. Oh, I, I love him. But it's not really love. I'll tell you what it is. It's infatuation. But it's not genuine love. What's really there? So when you say I love Jesus, my question is, do you really love him? Do you really love him? Or can he see the facade to say, no, you don't. Let me show you what's really there. Let me show you what's real. Let me show you what I can see. Let me show you what you what you said out of your mouth is not really what it is. And so here we are. And so God asked the question to Peter. And he asked him, and he says, Love us thou these. And you can put your own thing after that. What is it that you love more than God? What is it that you love more than God? And you can say, there ain't nothing. But is there something really there? What do you say that you love more than God? Lovest thou these more than him? How much do you really love him? How much do you really love Jesus? So let me talk to you this morning with these points. My number one first point is this. Real love. What is real love? Well, the Bible teaches us. And as I said, most people are in fact, it's about infatuation than it is love. Notice the definition. Infatuation or being smitten is the state of being carried away by an unreasoned passion, usually towards another person for which one has developed strong romantic or platonic or friendly feelings. Let me give you an example. You know when you were young, I don't know about you, but you will be young and those who will testify that you can be on the phone all day with your little friend that you know from school and then, you, know, the, the, you know, the young lady or brothers, the, you know, the young lady or sister, the young man that you on the phone and y'all talking all night and you sit there and say, I love you. And she said, I love you too. And you're getting all this lovey-dovey stuff. Some of y'all, come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all may be married today, but, but before it was just a little puppy love is what they call it. Or infatuated, you were infatuated by how he dressed or infatuated by how she looked and infatuated about what they have. It's really not love is what it appears to be so you say I love this person and I and I want to be with this person but it's really not what it is if you're just talking or you're trying to say something but in real life it's not really there yeah. right. amen yeah. and so we need to know what love is I hope I don't step on some toes today but I probably will today so you just might as well get with it and this is the type of preacher that I am I speak what's in the scripture so your faces go ahead and smile because you're giving yourself away so you might as well say amen you might as well say thank you Jesus but don't give it away when you're upset because you can be upset with me I don't care because I don't work for you you heard this before I don't work for you I'm going to teach and preach what the word of God says so somebody else just might as well wait there you might say thank you Jesus Don't get in your mind I ain't coming back tonight Because you're going to hear the wrong Uncut word of God For your soul to be saved Amen So what does the Bible teach us about this love? Well let's talk about it Paul points it out in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 Verses 4 through 8 You think you're in love Well let's talk about what love is Love, looking at the NLT Make it simple so we can all understand it And we can read it together as a family Love is patient Are you patient? Love is kind Are you kind? Love is not jealous Who are you jealous of? Love is not boastful or proud You're not walking around prideful or boastful you're not walking around talking about I'm jealous I'm jealous of my wife Why? Because I know that she loves me And if she wants to be saved She gonna have to live right Amen So if you are in a relationship And one of y'all are jealous That ain't love no way Let me give it to you early It ain't love no way So put that love back in the closet somewhere Or throw it in the garbage Love is not prideful or boastful But look at what it says It's not rude Go to the next one Oh rude How often are you so rude? I love you, Jesus, but I ain't coming to church back tonight. I love you, Jesus, but I got something to do. I love you, baby, but I ain't down what you want to do. It does not demand its 
own way. So what does that mean? That you don't try to put yourself over love. I don't demand my wife what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. But it's the love that's between us of how we compromise. It is not irritable. How often do you get irritated? How often do you get irritated? Because if you say I'm irritated with him today, but you love him tomorrow, uh-uh. You ain't in love no way. That's infatuation. Stop claiming that it's true love. Stop acting like you're really in love. Stop saying I love you, Jesus. But tomorrow you say you're coming to church. Uh-uh. What? I thought you loved Jesus. But he understands. He knows my heart. That's what we talk about. He knows my heart. But look at what it says. It keeps no record of being wrong. How many of us wake up talking about I love you, but in a couple of weeks, you remember what you did. You remember what you did. You remember how you treated me. You remember what you said. I remember how you looked at me. I remember how you said what you said. Holding records of so many things. But I thank God that he loves me. That he did what? He erased the record that I had with. He erased it in the waters of baptism. No longer is my record still there. He loves me. He loves me. And that's true love. How many are grateful that you have true love in your life? Amen. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Notice what I just said. You're not rejoicing about injustice or, or when somebody has done wrong, talking about her. they needed that. And they needed that. You know how it is. Sometimes we can go to church and we can go to church and say, this message right here is for the girl that's sitting on the second row. This message right here is for them over in that corner. No, uh This message is for you too. It's for you. Two. Go ahead and point to your neighbor and say, it's for you. Real quick, tell him, it's for you. So you better get with it. And real quick, we don't like to do this, but point to yourself and say, it's for me too. It's for me too. I need this as well. It is truth. The people of God, love never gives up. Look at what it says. Love never loses faith. It always hopeful and endures through what every circumstance. That's why when you stand at the altar, it's to death do us part. That's why when you stand at the altar is still death to us part. Look at what the scripture says. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless but love will last forever. These are tongues and these signs and these wonders they are going to soon pass away when we come before the Lord but love will last forever. So we want to know what is love? We just read about it right here. That's why God shows us even greater love. John chapter 3 verses 16. You read it before. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What did he do? For whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus says to us like this in John chapter 15 verse 13. Greater love have no man than these that a man lay down his life for his friends. Young lady you say you are in love? Ask him when he lay down his life for you. I'm just going to wait on it right there. Think about it. Will he lay down his life for you. The brother will tell you all day, uh-uh. If somebody starts shooting, you better look out because you might be the shield. I'm trying to tell you, if something go down, I bet you he won't get you first up out of here. He'll say, what happened to Shamika? Did she make it out? Oh, she's still up in there. Oh, Lord, bless Shamika. Bless Shamika, Lord. Bless her, Lord. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to let you see. That's why it's funny. I know I laugh at it too because it's funny because back in the day, I was like, baby, I got you. I got you. But as soon as I hear a pop, 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 I don't know what happened. Where she at? She back there. You better run, she make a run. Run, she make a run. If you want to save your own life, come on, people of God. I'm talking about real love. Real love. Real love. How do I know what is real love? I got one person to look at. First John chapter 4, verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God had to us. God is what? Love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. 
So the only way that you can learn what love is, is that you got to learn it from God. And so if he does not come to church, not coming to church because you come to church, not coming to church because she, because you come to church, brothers, but I come to tell you to love, 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 love. What I'm talking about, God is love. And the only way that I can learn about love, I got to be in the presence of the mighty God that is love. And that's how I'm able to learn. I can't even be a good husband to my wife if I don't know God, if I don't have a relationship with God. How am I supposed to love my children? the way I'm supposed to love him if I don't know who God is and God is not ahead of my life. You can't be a good mother or a good father or a good husband or a good spouse unless you know this type of love that's between you and God. How are you going to be able to say you know what love is if you never met the person that is love? I got to know who love is and that love is God. For you to be able to be a good spouse, you got to love God. What am I saying? I love God so much and I love my wife so much that I will be able to say I'm going to die on this mountain. What mountain is that? Is that we going to be in the house of the Lord. Baby, we got to go to church. We got to go to church. Young lady, if he loves you that much, he'll wait on you. Young ladies, if he loves you that much, he'll wait on you. Because you mean that much to him. That he will wait on you. Or he'll put a ring on it. I ain't talking about Beyonce. I'm talking about what's real. God had that song before Beyonce. If he put a ring on it and he wait for it, then that's love. If he doesn't, he don't love you no way. He wants to take from you. Come Come on, people of God. We know what love is because God is love. That's why I say true love comes from having the Holy Ghost. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost, there is no love that you can give. Romans chapter 5, verses 5. Look at what it says. And hope make it not ashamed because the love of God is shed where? Abroad in our hearts. By what? By what? God, how is it in our hearts? By the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So I tell anybody, if the person does not have the Holy Ghost, I understand they might be family, but again, I tell you, and I'm not trying to come between family, but I'll tell you, if they don't have the Holy Ghost, all you can do is trust how they are as a person, but don't try to bank on that because they don't have the Holy Ghost to line up behind that to, to hold up to their word. I can't be a man without the Holy Ghost. I can't be a good man without the Holy Ghost. I can't even be a preacher or a pastor without the Holy Ghost. That's why I tell many people you go, might go to different churches but you better make sure that preacher got the Holy Ghost because why? He will take you for your money. He'll dog you out. He'll sleep with the sisters in the church. He'll have babies with this one and that one and he'll be going on doing this. He'll be doing all of this crazy stuff. You know it's out there is out there and if they don't have the Holy Ghost I tell you today close your ears and don't listen to them no more they must have the Holy Ghost Amen. so if I go down to 1st John chapter 4 verses 18 and 19 look at what the Bible says in this verse there is no fear in love but perfect fear or perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment he that fear is not made perfect in love we love him because he first loved us. I did not love God. I did not know about love until I was introduced to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm so glad with that. So when it comes to love, the word of God teaches us what true or real love is. Which leads me to my second point. Pay attention to what it is, what I'm going to say right now. The testing of your love. Don't you understand that one day you say you love God, then it's going to come a day when your love is going to be tested. We're going to see how much you really, really love God. We're going to see. We'll see by tonight who comes back to the house of God. We will see by tonight. Tell your wife, uh, husbands and wives, look at each other. Do you really love God? Come on, look around and ask your neighbor. Do you really love God? If you love God, then you'll be here tonight. Pastor ain't got to come up to you to say you don't love God. I can watch and see who's in the house of God to see if you really love God. I'm just checking who here, who here, who here, who I'm just going down the aisle. I'm missing somebody. And so when you say I love God and you hold up your hand and say praise the Lord and you do all of these jerks and you do all this hallelujah, I can look at you not judging you, but I can be able to say by your actions I can tell if you really love God. What are you putting over him? What comes in more in presence of him? You might say, well, Pastor, this is important. Don't you think this is important? I've been praying for this. It ain't more important than what God 
So how? I tell people out there, how are you going to say you love God or you love Jesus, okay, but you don't love the body? Okay? How are you going to say, that would be like, Pastor, I love you, okay, but I only love this part, but I don't love everything else. Okay? How are you going to say that? Okay? I love Jesus, but don't love the body. Okay? That's a lie. Okay? Tell your husband to be say, baby, if I told my wife, baby, I only don't love the head, but everything down below, I don't love that at all. How are you going to say that? Okay? So I love the body. I love the head and the body. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. He's the head of the body. So I love the body. I love being in church because this is where we get our practice in. This is where we assemble together. And when we get up there, minister spirit, we're going to do what? Assemble ourselves together. So you can't come up there and be talking about, oh, get away from me. Oh, you can't be up in that assembly together talking about, she made it up. You can't be up there talking about that. You got to love everybody. And you got to want to come to church. You got to want to be in the presence of God. I ain't that other preacher. You better recognize that God says, I will give you preachers after my own heart that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So today, just wave your hand if you understand what I am saying about real love. Hallelujah. When it comes to God, your love will be tested. We have songs. I love that song. Donald McClurk can sing that song that he's not the one that made it, but those old school songs. And I love Jesus. He's my savior. Songs are raging. He's my saint's shelter. Wherever I need him, he will follow. I love Jesus and he loves me. We sing these songs. But do you know what you're talking about? Or is it just the sound and the beat that you like? You just clap your hands because it's the beat that you like. But when I say that, I mean that. When I say that, I really mean that. And so this is what Peter was going through. Look at Mark chapter 14, verse 27. Has this ever happened to you? Well, you might not say you already has, but we'll talk about it. Mark chapter 14, verse 27 and 31. Make it real simple. You can read it in the Bible. You can read it in the KJV or in the NLT. It's on the NLT on the screen. Look at what it says. On the way, look what happened to Peter. On the way, Jesus told them, all of you will desert me. Could you imagine Jesus saying, you are going to desert me. And notice what he says, what the scripture says, God will strike the, God will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be what? Scattered. Go to the next verse. But after I am raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you and to Galilee and meet you there. The next verse, look at what it says. Look at what it says in verse 29. Peter said to him, even if everyone else deserts you, I never will. Does that sound like some of us? God, it doesn't matter. I love you so much. I'm going to always be with you. I put everything to the side. Why? Because I love Jesus. He's my Savior. God, I love you so much. God, God, and we cry. And we do all of these things. And we go all these different emotions and everything about God. And I know God. And he's my father. And he's this and he's that. And I know I need Jesus. And the same way that we are. Peter was the same way, Brother Williams. The same way. I'll never desert you. And then he goes and says, Jesus replied. <laughs> See, Jesus knows everything, right? Doesn't he know everything? He gonna pull your car and he'll say, oh, you do? Oh, okay. So you won't leave me? You won't walk away from me? You won't put nothing over me? You won't put your tiredness over me? So that means when God says, I want somebody to worship me, you won't give him just a little golf clap? You won't just give him a little bit of wave? But you will just get up out that bed and say, you know what? I'm supposed to be in church. And why? Because he's waiting for me to worship him. I got to get to the house of the Lord. Why? Because he's waiting for me to praise him. I got to sing no matter what's going on. Why? Because he's ready for me to praise him. I just understand. I got to understand that Sister Smith, that she was the other day, but she came up here and sung today, and that's why I'm looking at her, and I begin to say, thank God, because she could have took that sickness and been able to say, I can't do it today, I can't get up to help, I can't be in my place, but when you love God, and when you love somebody, you do what? I put myself to the side, and it's about the person that I love, that's why when I woke up this morning, was pastor tired? Yes, was pastor weary? Yes, I was tired all in my body, my bones were hurt, and I stayed up all night, but I was before the Lord asking God, God, what do I give the people? And so I'm not putting my tiredness or nothing before God. I'll come to church, I'll worship Him, I'll sing, I'll shout, I'll shout out hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I cannot be quiet because God has been too good to me. Shout out to God. Say thank you, Jesus. 
Jesus replied, replied to Peter and says, I'll tell you the truth. Peter, I'll tell you something that you don't even know. This very night, notice what God said, this very night before the roaster crows, twice, you will twice whether you will deny three times that you even know me. So God is going to test you what you're talking about, you heart. You got a relationship with him? Okay, let's test that. You love him? Okay, let's test that. Let's see what's really going on. Let's see if you really love like you say you love. And look at what Peter says. Peter says, no. Have you ever told Jesus no? Peter's telling him, no, God. Like God don't know everything. Peter coming out, no. That ain't me. Uh-uh, it ain't me, brother. You know how we kind of get bold and we get real religious and we get real sectimonious and he said, uh-uh, I love Jesus because I know what he's there for me. You start going down all your testimonies. I remember when I needed some money and God provided. I remember when I was doing this and I got provided. I remember I was going through this and God provided because I know Jesus and he loves me. God is great and greatly to be praised. There's nobody that can do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Jesus is my Savior and God is this and God is that. And by the time you look around, you got a whole wall of all of these testimonies. But when the real thing comes on and he puts his finger right up on the thing that you need to give up, you begin to say, God, I love you, but I don't love you like that. Yes, like Peter said, no, God, I love you, God. But as soon as he put his finger on it, then something comes out. So that's why we sit back and I wait to see what's really there. What's really going to come out? You got that job that you've been praying for, but now that you got the job, where you at? You got that car that you've been asking for. But you just roll past. Where'd you go? You got all of these things that happen, but where you at? All of these things that God does for you, but where you are? I'm looking for you. God is looking for you, but where you do love Him? Do you really, really love Him like you say that you do? Or you just talking? Ask your neighbor, are you just talking? Or is it real? Are you just talking, husband? Or is it real? Are you just talking, young lady? Or is it real? Do you really love Him? Because you can't say that I love Jesus, but I don't love Him like that. Either you love one. And you hate the other We just read it Either you love one Or you hate the other So one of you love Do you love Jesus Or do you love Satan I know it's hard Do you love Satan Or do you love Jesus You can't say I'm waiting I'm anticipating I'm in the gray area The devil is alive God said I'll screw you out And I'll kick you out Which means that they fought you already on this side And the devil looking at you You don't really love me But I'm going to kill you anyway And so what does God say Either you're down Or you're not and that's how I am. I tell my wife, baby, this is the A team. Either you're down or you're not. Are you down with me? And Jesus wants to know, are you down with him? Are you really with him? Do you really love him like you're saying? Are you really with him? Are you really down with him? Do you want him? Do you love him? Do you want him? Do you want, him? Do you want to be saved? Are you really down with Jesus? Let him know if you're really down. I'm with you, Lord. And Peter said, no. Even if I had to die, look at that. Look at the language that he uses. Even if I had to die with you, I would never deny you. <laughs> and all the others bowed the same. Peter had to say it first, and then all the others got to look forward and say, you know, me too, Lord. <laughs> me too. You, you love me? Okay, I love you too. I love you too. Me too. But that's just how we are, people. And that's how we keep it in real. Peter sounded confident. He sounded how he would sound. He even showed emotions. I, I wonder if he even shared a tear. It doesn't say, but I just wonder if he just shared a tear. One of he just took a little tear and tear drops and said, Lord, I love you. No, I won't. And we do that. I love him so much. We go through the emotions. We go through the emotions. How many know we are, that we are very emotional? Very emotional. We go through the emotions. And then we'll cry. And we'll, we'll, we'll do all of these things. And it, and it seems and appears as if your love is genuine. But God says, I'm looking through the tears. I, I, I'm looking through all that formality. I'll I, I push all that aside about what he's done for you. I, I, I want to know what's real going on. Move all of that stuff. Uh, move all of that stuff that's trying to cover up. Uh, and so that's how we come naked before God. God sees everything. Uh, I know everything about you. I know your heart and the intentions and the motives uh, that's behind it. I know why. Uh, I know why you come to church. Uh, I know why you say that you love God. I know what's really going on. But as soon as he don't bless you with that house, uh, or if he don't bless you with that car, or something goes wrong and it's not blessed, or soon something happens, then you do what to God? Peace out. Why? Because he didn't help me. I've been praying and he didn't answer me the way I wanted him to answer. He didn't do what I wanted him to do. He didn't do it the way that I thought he would do. Matter of fact, I got to go miss church. Why? Because I got to go figure it out. You ain't got to figure it out nothing. Let God do it. Let God handle it. Stop trying to get in the mix of it. You want it to work out? Let 
God handled it and it will work out. But if there's a pushback, notice what I just said. Anything that's a pushback, anything that's a pushback, pay attention, people of God. It may not be what God wants for you. Pay attention to what I'm saying. If there's a pushback, it may not be what God wants for you. The door opens easy. When I came here, the door opened up. The house was already there. The child was already there. Everything was in its place. All the chips fell like the wanted to do. Why? Because I was in the will of God. And when you're in the will of God, you don't have to question, is this love? Or if this is real? I know it's real. I know it's real. Why? Because God set it up. God put it in order. God gave us that straight in heaven. That's how you know it is real. It's no pushback. It's no disobedience. It's no rebellion. It's none of that. That's how you know it is real. Because it's not, it's not like the things that you see in the world. It's real love. So he might have showed emotions, pride, doing religious things. But when the heat was put on him, we see what Peter did. We see what Peter did. And when Jesus got arrested, they approached Peter. And you know the story. I don't have time to go through and read it. But Peter did what? Somebody came to him and said, hey, you look just like him. You look like you just hang around Jesus. He began to say, not me. Uh-oh. Yeah, you even sound like him. Who, me? Uh-uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I thought I saw you to the point the Bible says that he started using profanity. He started cursing. Why? Because if I curse, then I look like the world. And then I don't blend in with the saints of God. Because if I start cursing, I start doing this, bleep, 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 and then you can tell, oh yeah, no, you're not saved. But uh, you saved because you were filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. But you're trying to act like you're still in the world and got a mix of the world. But let me tell you something, brother. Let me tell you, young lady. You cannot go back out in that world and mix with that anymore. Because why? The world knows something is different about you. And you can't go back out there talking about, let me blend back in. I've been thought about it many times. Like I told you, people got it. It took a little time to got the work on me, but when it did, he shook me like I I couldn't lose that no more. That if I ever try to go back out there, I'm telling you, I know I don't blend in. I don't even know the latest dance. I'm still doing the two steps. What else they doing? I don't know. I'm just still doing this. They're looking at me like, you don't belong here. I don't do it. I need to get out of here. No, I get out of here. I just get out of here and go to church. That's what you need to do. You need to start walking. Doing the choir walk. You know back in the day when the choir walk in. The choir wanna walk in. That's your step not today. That's your step today. But all of this other stuff, that's not real. No way. You you need to get back to where you are, back to your first love. So Peter, we know what he did. The Bible said the cock crew. When the cock crew, it was the Bible lets us know that Peter, he was able to look at Jesus right in his face and say, I did it, then. I did exactly what you said I was going to do. I was going to deny you. And the Bible says that Peter went away. He went weeping. He went quiet because what did he do? He let God down. He went away crying. He said, oh, man. I said I was going to be down with him. But as soon as the situation came up, I had doubts. What's going on with me? As soon as the situation came up, I didn't believe no more. As soon as this problem came out and he didn't heal my sickness like I thought he was going to do it. And then now I'm, I'm kind of going through all these frenzies. And we got to do this. We got to work out this. And we got to Wait a minute. I thought God was the one that's working out for you. I thought God was the head of your life. I thought God God was the one that was going to provide. I thought God was the one that you served. But if he's the one that you served, do you love thou these more than me? Do you love yourself more than me? Do you love these things in the world more than me? Do you love him more than me, sister? Do you love God more than what? Do you love that young lady more than God, brother? What is it? Do you love this money? What is it that you love before God? And the cock crew. And the Bible says that Peter, Peter ran off crying and weeping. And guess what he did? Guess what Peter did? After all of that happened, Peter went back to fishing. Because Peter is a fisherman. And the scripture lets us know that he went back fishing. Look at John chapter 21 verse 3 to 6. And I come to tell you that once you come in contact with God, you cannot go back doing what you used to do. And the Bible says that Peter, Peter began to say, man, if I walked away from God, I might as well just go back doing what I did. If I failed God, I might as well just go back and do what I've always done. If I am not with God, I might as well go back out there in the streets. I might as well just go back out there and do what I was always doing. And the Bible says, man, Peter said unto them, I go fishing. They said unto him, we also go with thee. Don't you understand that if you leave, that you're probably going to bring somebody with you because somebody's going to trust in your word and they're going to follow you. That means you're taking other people out of the church of the living God. You're going to answer that thing I'm telling you. You will answer to this in this preacher today in the Holy Ghost. You are going to answer this today. But if you put anybody out of this church, 
Uh -huh. I'm telling you, okay. God is gonna knock at your door, Haki. Okay. You wanna know why you won't have problems in your finances, Haki? Okay. Cause God is getting your attention, Haki. Okay. God is gonna let you know, Haki. Okay. Don't you pull out any sheep, Haki. Okay. Out of this house, Haki. Okay. Out of this church, Haki. Okay. Cause you didn't die for him, Haki. Okay. You didn't shed your blood, Haki. Okay. So you better say, you know what, Haki? Okay. Let me get my hands off of this, Haki. Okay. Let me get my hands off of this, Haki. Okay. Because you're a distraction, Haki. Okay. You are a distraction, Haki. Okay. So Peter said, Haki, okay. I go fishing, Haki. Okay. Welcome to, Haki. Okay. Welcome to, they said, Haki. Okay. So they went out to the boat, Haki. Okay. But they caught nothing, Haki. Okay. Don't you understand, Haki? Okay. Peter was a fisherman, Haki. Okay. And he knew about fishing, Haki. Okay. He knew where the fish were, Haki. Okay. He knew how to catch them, Haki. Okay. You know you got those up in here, Haki. Okay. Brother Keith, he's a fisherman, Haki. Okay. Brother Keith can go out there, Haki, okay. at any time, Haki. Okay. And toss out there real, Haki. Okay. And say, how many did you get, Brother Peter? Okay. Brother, Brother Keith, how you get, Haki? Okay. Then I got a whole bunch. I got them in my refrigerator. You want some, Haki? Okay. I got some in my refrigerator. You want some, Haki? Okay. I got them frozen in the refrigerator. You want some, Haki? Okay. Because that's what he does. He's a fisherman, Haki. Okay. He knows how to do it, Haki. Okay. And so when Peter tried to go out, Haki, okay. and go out to get back to what he's doing, Haki, okay. the Bible says he did what, Haki? Okay. He caught nothing, Haki. Okay. Nothing all night, Haki. Okay. And at dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, Haki. Okay. But the disciples couldn't see who he was, Haki. Okay. So when you occupy, Haki, okay. with all of these things, Haki, okay. you really can't see that God is still standing there, Haki. Okay. When you're occupied, Haki, okay. you really can't see, Haki. Okay. Because your head down, Haki. Okay. Your head is down like this, Haki. Okay. But Jesus, the Bible says, Haki, okay. I look to the hills, Haki, okay. which come in my help, Haki. Okay. My help comes from the Lord, Haki. Okay. So put your head up, Haki. Okay. Let's stop looking at these things, Haki. Okay. Love is now these more than me, Haki. Okay. Love is now these more than me, Haki. Okay. Put your head up, Haki. Okay. Back upon Christ, Haki. Okay. Put your head up, Haki. Okay. Back upon Christ, Haki. Okay. Put your head up, Haki. Okay. Back upon Christ, Haki. Okay. Get back in the plane, Haki. Okay. Get back on the game, Haki. Okay. Get back to your place, Haki. Okay. We call that fellows, Haki. Okay. Brothers, Haki. Okay. Children, Haki. Okay. Notice what he said. Children, Haki. Okay. In the KJV, Haki. Okay. Have you caught any fish, Haki? Okay. No, they replied, Haki. Okay. We've been out here all day, Haki. Okay. And we ain't Call nothing, Haki. Okay. But when Jesus steps on the picture, Haki, okay. what does he do? He lets Peter know, Haki, okay, that without me, you are nothing, Haki. Okay. Then he says, Haki, okay, throw out your net on the right hand side of the boat, Haki, okay, and you'll get some, Haki. Okay. So they did, Haki, okay, and they couldn't haul in the net, Haki. Okay. Don't you understand, Haki, okay, that when God says, Yeah, Haki, okay, I will do exceeding abundantly okay. above all that I can add, you can ask or think, Haki, okay, that with God, Haki, okay, you without God, you're nothing, Haki. Okay, but with God, you're everything, Haki. Okay, you're everything people God, Haki. Okay. So why don't you switch back, Haki? Okay, come on back, Haki. Get back closer, Haki. Go back out the car, Haki. Get back right with God, Haki. It's 2019, Haki. Don't take that to 2018, Haki. Over to 2019, Haki. Be faithful, be faithful, Haki. Be faithful, be faithful. He will make you ruler over many. Which is why the scripture talks to us about a child of God becoming lukewarm or backsliding, allowing something to distract them from getting closer to God. And notice how Peter warns us. People of God, the reason why God, is, I'm, God has put this on my heart, because I come to tell you, God has already given us authority. In 2019, people of God, hear me, Bell Blade, that God has given new life here, authority in this city. And that what we speak and how we pray fervently, it shall come to pass. It's already written in heaven. And all we have to do is be the vessel that God wants us to be. But that devil is crafty and subtle. That devil is a supplanter just like Jacob was before his name was changed to Israel. That if you allow him to what? Distract you. If you allow him to not, for you not to know the word. Just like Eve, she did not know what God said. So when the devil heard it, that serpent heard it in the Eden, that's when he said, you shall not surely die. And so if you allow that serpent to do what? Distract you. You will be lost and you will die. And so we need to make sure that this train is still moving. So you got to get back with it. Get back the way that God wanted you to be. Because Peter warns us in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 21 to 22. For it had been better. Notice what I just said. Notice what the scripture said. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandments delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. But it happened. It is happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog. Notice what I didn't call you a dog. Don't get mad and say, Pastor, you called me a dog. No, the scripture called you a dog. The dog is turned to its own vomit again. And so that was washed to her walling or welling in the mire. And so that's what Peter is letting us know. He's warning you that once you get introduced to truth and once you get baptized in the name of Jesus and once you get filled with the Holy Ghost, if you go back out there, if you go back out there, if you get introduced to truth or if you hear truth from a real Preacher, from a 
real church and you go back out there it's like a dog going back and eating up his vomit eating up vomit eating up stuff because what did God just give you he gave you real food he gave you the real soul food he gave you real meat he gave you real milk but if you go back out there and eat off this world and get involved with the things that God brought you out of and he wants to deliver you from it's like you're eating up vomit but Jesus does not give up on us ain't you so glad that Jesus don't give up on us so easy I'm so glad that he does not give up on us so easy why because God said I paid the price so if I paid the price and I, Jesus said I died for them I ain't giving up on them so easy so what is God going to do I'll trouble their life I'll trouble you and bring you back to the altar I'll tell the preacher to preach a message I'll tell the preacher to get on top of you and then shepherd to let you know what you need to do you might get mad at the preacher and you might say he reminds me of somebody else but I ain't that preacher I'm a shepherd that God put in place to make sure that your soul be saved because it's the pastor that watches over your soul I gotta give an account and every pastor gotta give an account and so what is God doing it's not the preacher but it's God God is wanting you to be saved and stay saved so he does what I'm going after you because I did not give up on you that easy I died for you I invested something into you so John 21 verse 15 and 17 notice what it says so when they had died Jesus said a time to Peter Simon son of Jonas lovest thou me more than these just like I asked you do you love this stuff more than Jesus and he said unto him with his mouth yea Lord thou knowest that I love thee he said unto him feed my lambs then do what I tell you to do walk the way I tell you to walk preach and be a witness be a witness Simon because there's many people waiting for you to preach that message so that they can come in people are waiting for you to get your life lined up so that you can tell them what they must do to be saved that you can tell them that God is real and that God can't change your life because God did me he's been waiting on your testimony and so he asks him again in verse 16 he said unto him again the second time Simon son of Jonas lovest thou me do you love him he said unto him yea Lord thou knowest that I love thee he said unto him then feed my sheep and he said unto him the third time here it goes third time is a charm Simon son of Jonas lovest thou me do you really love me Simon Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time but notice what Peter said Peter didn't just talk something nice he didn't just say something what did Peter say he said you know what God you know all things you know if I really love you you know if I'm really right you know what's real and how do we know it's real because your life will line up with the scriptures you will do what's in the scriptures you will do what not what you think talk about he does love me because I just read it he knows what I'm thinking uh -uh. that's not what they're saying people of God what they're saying is if your life lines up with the word of God and you follow his commandments and you do what he says to do then yes you love him yes you do love him so I'm asking you today what will separate you from God what's pulling at your heart what will make you walk away what will kill your drive to go to go after him is it your lifestyle is it that relationship is it money is it pride is it the tangible things what if you found out that what you believe what if you found out that what you believed in was wrong I'm about to touch somebody today because many people might go up in the church and what they found out it might not be what's in the scripture so you might have heard that being baptized in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost that that was okay but I come to tell you that faith or believing that was wrong so will you walk away now now that I told you that what you believed in was wrong would you walk away if I told you you need to get out of that relationship would you walk away if I told you that you must be in the house of God to be saved? Would you walk away? Would you be mad if I told you you must surrender and submit yourself? Would you be mad if I told you that you need to stop with this attitude that you have? Would you be mad if I told you that your attitude stinks? Would you be mad if I told you that your personality that you have is not what God gave you? So stop saying this is how I am. Would you be mad if I told you that that relationship is unlawful? Would you be mad if I told you that God wants more for you and he wants you to give up these things? Would you be mad? Would you be mad? What would make you leave her what would make you leave her because Jesus says I am the way the truth and the life and so now you're hearing truth but will you walk away but is it you is it you that's putting yourself in before God Matthew chapter 10 verse 39 I'm trying to bring it home here it goes if you cling to your life listen to what I'm saying people of God if you cling to your life you will lose it but if you give up your life for me you will find it not for me but for him he says if you cling to your life
life, Jesus is saying, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. So that's what God tells you to do. That's what God tells you to do, my brother. That's what God tells you to do, Adam. But minister, he tells you to give up your life. That if you give up your life, you're going to find life. But if you hold on to your life, you're going to lose that life. You're going to lose that house. You're going to lose that car. You're going to lose a relationship. And you're going to lose your soul. You've got to let go of these things that you're holding on to to get to Jesus. Because that's the only way that you're going to live. The question is, do you want to live? Do you want to live? Do you want to live? How many want to live? Wake up. Wake up. Do you want to live? Do you want to live? So here it is. Bring it home. Romans 8, 35 and 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sorrow? As it is written for the sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. What does that mean? You won't go through something as a child of God. Nay, and all these things are more, that we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. For I am persuaded. Somebody say, I'm persuaded. I am persuaded, God. I'm persuaded. I'm so persuaded, God. That neither death, where the death comes at knocking on my door, I'm not afraid. Nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, nor any other person shall be able to separate me or us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so ask yourself, do you really love him? Do you really love him? Because John 14, 15 says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And then you people say, well, nobody's perfect, Pastor. But if nobody's perfect, why does the Bible tell us? Why does the Bible tell us in Matthew 5 and 48? Be ye perfect, for he be, be therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. So is God asking us to do something that we cannot do? Why would he say that in the scripture? Be ye perfect. So stop saying that stuff. Ain't nobody perfect. The devil is a liar. You can be perfect when you walk with Jesus. You can be perfect when you live your life according to the word of God. You can be perfect. Perfect in what? Perfect in that which you know. Not perfect in a perfect being, but perfect in that which you know. So if you know to do right and you do wrong, it's a sin unto you. That means you're not perfect. When you know to do right, but you do the opposite of what was said, then that's how you know sin is right there. And yes, you're not perfect because you have sin. Which leads me to my last point. Choose today whom you will serve or who you will love. Choose today. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24. No man can serve two masters, but either he will hate one and love the other or else he will hold on to one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and man it. So I ask you, look at your hand right now. What are you holding on to? What are you holding on to? Are you holding on to anger? Are you holding on judgmentality? Are you holding on to things that you should let go? Let these things go. Are there people around you that is kind of taking your walk? They're taking because when they're putting stuff in your head, I'm telling you, let them go. Let that go. Let it go or you're going to be lost. Let it go because you're going to be lost. The word of God is true and it hurts. Don't you understand? I know that the word of God hurts it hurt me it hurts me all the time I get offended but I gotta check myself and say God you're talking right now that's why we show scripture so you won't know it's me you can read it for yourself so you will know what God says it's going to hurt and it may start off bitter but in the end of it, in a moment it's going to be sweet and good to you in a moment when you get over this hurdle you're going to look back and say I remember when I was there I remember when I used to be in a gambling den I remember when I used to smoke I remember I remember when I used to drink. I remember I was in bed to bed. I remember I thought I needed somebody and I didn't want to be alone. I remember when I was abandoned. I remember I had this sickness. I remember I didn't have no money. I remember I did this. And all of these testimonies would come out. But all of a sudden, you can begin to say, but I got Jesus. But now I got Jesus. But now I got Jesus. So I got everything I need. Now I got Jesus. How many know that now you got Jesus? You think you came on a Sunday morning for any coincidence? No. You came because God, God orchestrated for you to hear 
hearing this message, so you will know, God, I gotta move this stuff out of my way. If family's in the way, move them. And I know this might hurt, but look at what it says, Luke 14 and 26. Here it goes. I want you to say we're gonna stand after this. But look at what it says, Luke chapter 26, verse 27. Let me bring this home. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother, look at what it says. If you hate not your father and your mother and your wife and your children and brethren and sisters, yea, and in in his own life, if you don't hate your own life, you cannot be his disciple. And whatsoever do not bear his cross and come after me, you cannot be my disciple. And so what does God say? You got to hate everything above you. Hate everything that's trying to get close to you and Jesus. So if it's around you and it's stopping you from going forward, you got to push it to the side. If it's false doctrine, push it to the side. If it's false religion, push it to the side. Mary is not the mother of God. Stop bowing down to Mary. Mary was just a human just like you and I. And Mary had to get the Holy Ghost and she had to be baptized. Ain't no such thing. Believe it in your heart. Confess it with your mouth. That's Romans chapter 10 verses 9. But that's not how God told us to be saved. God tells us you got to let go of that relationship. Let go of that style. Let go of all these things in the world. If you really want to be saved. And let go of your own beliefs. Let go of your will. Because First John chapter 2 verse 15. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If the man, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. How many got the love of God inside of you today? How many truly love God today? Let us stand up on our feet right now. In the name of Jesus. And so I ask you this morning. Lovest thou these more than him? Do you love these things more than God? What do you love more than Jesus? What do you love more than Jesus? Come on ministers, I need you to move fast. What do you love more than Jesus? What do you love more than Jesus? I want everyone to close your eyes right now and think about it. Don't look at anybody. Don't look at your children. Don't look at your husband or your spouse. This is about you and you alone. What do you love more than God? What is it? I know and God knows because God shows what it is that you love. You're going to go back home to it and you're going to try to say, Lord, I need you to accept me the way that I am now. And that's a lie. He will not. He will not accept you what you have. Do you love God more than these? What is it that you love more than him? So John chapter 3 verse 3. He says, really, really, I say unto you, except a man be born again of the water and of the spirit. John chapter 3 verses 5. You cannot enter the kingdom of God. John 3 and 7. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. Neither pray I these alone, but for them that also shall believe on me through their word, through the apostles' words. So I say today, there's somebody in here that needs to make a vow unto God. That you need to let God know and be serious with him. To tell him, God, I love you more. I do love you more. Because the question is, do you love these things more than him? What is it that you love more than God? What is it? Is it family? Is it friends? Is it a relationship? Is it your money? Is it your job? What is it? Is it that relationship? What is it that you love more than God? Why won't you go after him the way that you should? Why won't you seek for him the way that you should? Now that you got the gift that you wanted, now that you got the house, and now that you got the car and the money, how is your walk now? What are you going to do now? What is coming between you and God now? Think about it, people of God. It is the enemy that's trying to get your distraction. It is the enemy trying to pull at your heart. What do you love more than God? Do you love him more? That's the question. Do you love him more? What is it that you love more than him? Lovest thou these more than him? So if you're here today and you need God to touch you again, you need God, as they said in prayer breakfast, revive you again. Why don't you let God revive you again? Why don't you let God revive you again? Somebody needs to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody needs to know for sure if you have the Holy Ghost. See if your Holy Ghost is real. See if you got what you claim that you have. See if your love for God is what it really is. See if it's that what it really is. Do you love God? Do you really love him? Or did you just come to hear a pretty sermon because you said I was going to come to the church? That's not what this is for. It's for you to get your soul right with God. Lovest thou these more than Jesus? If you're here today, why don't you come? We will pray for you. We will pray for you and ask God to help you. Because the Bible says, Lord, we believe but help our unbelief. I believe, God, but I need you to help my unbelief. 
Help me. Help me because, Lord, it's hard to break off this relationship. It's hard for me to let go of family. It's hard for me to let go of these things. It's hard for you to break off from these things. But why don't you testify unto God that you're just not saying something, but you mean it. That you truly love God more than these things. In the name of Jesus. If you need the Holy Ghost, come, we'll pray for you. If you need God to revive you, because you're being rocked to sleep, come on. We'll pray for you. We'll pray for you. We'll pray for you. And ask God to help you. But you have to do something first. We so much to these people that we say, I'll wait till God come to me, and then I'll change. You have to say, no, God, I need something from you, and I'm coming to get it. Revive me again. Let us lift up our hands unto the Lord right now. And let's ask God to help us. Father God, we thank you right now. We give you glory, we give you honor and praise. Father, will you see everything and you know all things. You know how real we are and you know what's taking place in our heart. Many of us have been pricked by the word of God, but we still have not yet moved. Father, it is not about this preaching, but it's all about you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that every soul in this place that has heard your voice through the word of God, that they will not quench it, that they will not let it hard keep them, God, from coming to you. The seed was planted, and God, I pray that the seed will produce fruit today. That in the name of Jesus, God, I bind every doubt, every unbelief, every person that God feels embarrassed. It's not that God the preacher is talking about them. Because we all have heard the word. And we all have felt the conviction. It's not condemnation. But it's conviction to get us right with you. Because these things shall perish. These things shall perish. But I want to live forever. Help me to live, God. I must live. Hell was not made for me. Hell was not made for your children. Hell was not made for us. But it was made for the devil and his angels. But hell has enlarged itself. Because people have loved others more than they love you. They have loved other things more than they have loved you. But I pray that your heart will change today. Young lady, let your heart change today. My brother, let your heart change today. For he knows what's in your heart and your motives. He knows if you're really going to change. He knows if you're going to break. He knows if you're going to listen. So if you don't want to listen, there is no more use for you. There is no more use because there's nothing that he can do. No one can change you. And God can change you. No one can change you, my brother. And God doesn't change your system. No pepper, no preacher can help you if you don't want to get help for yourself. If you don't want to change yourself, no one can do anything for you. But God, the drugs will still have a hold of your life. The drugs and the sex will still have a hold of your life. Because you have not gotten to a place where you think that, that you need God more. Don't just say it out of your mouth, Peter. Simon, don't just say it out of your mouth. But 